Salutations, Scoob Believer. Do you have a dream of becoming an entrepreneur, but don't know where to start or even what to do? Where can I gather information quickly about what's in my zone of genius? Don't worry, Scoob Believers. I got you covered. Go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt and check out an amazing set of AI prompts that will give you ideas, information, and articles to help you get across that start line. Once again, go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt to get you started now. Good luck, school believer. This is an Undiscovered Legacy production. Undiscovered Entrepreneur, episode number 68. Visions lead the way. Innovate at 68. Success on the slate. Oh, haiku. <laughs> I just hope that everybody here knows no matter what happens, good or bad, you are amazing. You are worthy. You are enough just the way you are, right? You don't have to do anything, change anything, or prove anything to anyone, not even yourself, because you are truly amazing, worthy, and enough. So embrace that. Let that energy flow through you and, and course through you and do show in everything that you do, because you truly are amazing, worthy, and enough, even if you don't feel like it at that time. You are. To the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, the podcast where brand new entrepreneurs come to life and could quite possibly be discovered. Join me, DJ Scoob, and the rest of the Scoob Believers as we help these new businesses become a reality. And now, away we go! Hello, Scoob Believers, and welcome to episode number 68 of The Undiscovered Entrepreneur, and it's me, DJ Scoob, <laughs> coming at you at whatever device you happen to be listening on. Okay, so today we're actually starting a new segment for our experienced entrepreneur. So today is episode number one of three of our experienced entrepreneurs. So today we are talking to Spencer. Now, Spencer is known as the Prince of Positivity, and I think after maybe about five minutes of listening to this guy, you're going to figure out why. And make sure you pay close attention to, if you were watching on YouTube, pay close attention to what happens. To the first. It's amazing. I didn't even know this was going to happen. If you're listening on the podcast, when you're done listening, go watch at least the first five minutes on YouTube. It'll literally blow your mind, <laughs> I guess you could say. But right now, we're going to listen to our first of three experienced entrepreneurs. So let's take a listen to Spencer Jones. Salutations, school believers, and we are here again with another amazing entrepreneur. Today, we're interviewing an experienced entrepreneur. Today, we're talking to Spencer. Hey, Spencer. Hey, hey, how are you doing? Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking a little time out of your day to be on the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. I appreciate you. Oh, my gosh. I appreciate you having me on. I'm super excited to be here and hopefully pour some love, energy, and offer some tips to the beginning entrepreneur so that they can go crush their journey and shine their light. Well, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? <laughs> I don't think so. Like, I've, I've had people pour into me, so I'm just happy that I can now pour into others. Oh, perfect. All right. But I do have one kind of semi-serious question to ask you. Okay, mm. you ready? I'm ready. All right. Are you a school believer? Oh, of course I am. Oh, boy. Let's see. Gonna, well, where are you? You have fireworks. Oh, my goodness. You had the fireworks. I don't believe it. Oh. That's going to look so great on the video. Okay. <laughs> the guy was kidding. I didn't realize you had fireworks. Check out the video. I thought I'd leave it as an extra surprise for you. So if you want to see the video, go check out the video. You can see the fireworks going off in the background here. Nice. That's amazing. Thank you and so much. the house for... did not burn down. So that's a good Oh, it's sign. still there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. So what I'd like you to do here, Spencer, just give us a little bit of bio background, how you got started in your entrepreneur adventure, why you got started in, in your entrepreneur adventure and all of that good information. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's a long, can be a long story and I'll try to condense it down to a shorter one. 
well, I'll share the endpoint first. So what we do currently is we help people create a positive, abundant mindset to really step into their light and shine bright, right? So that they could be themselves and shine. But what I realized in my own journey to do that is there is a lot of obstacles in the way. So to go back 10 plus years ago, I was a middle school and high school choir director. That's what I went to college for. I'm a professionally trained musician. And so then I started teaching and I loved being in the classroom, helping students be at their best. Well, throughout my college journey, I gained and lost weight. I started working out, then stopped working out. And through teaching, gained and lost weight, right? I think we all have been on that yo-yo diet to, to some end or another. And I finally got sick and tired of it. I discovered a passion of mine, kayak fishing. I discovered it between college and teaching, and I fell in love with that passion. And I realized one summer that I, by the end of that summer, I was struggling to put the kayak on top of my car, that I couldn't paddle as far as I wanted to. And so through that, I'm like, okay, I've done this yo-yo thing before, but I'm finally sick and tired of this. I'm done. And it still took me a little while to finally uh, go after it. So I decided December 26th, the day after Christmas, so I could enjoy Thanksgiving. I can enjoy all the food at Christmas. I'm going to start working out. And then I stuck to that. I started working out, lost some weight, and I was doing the, the P90X Beachbody program. And friends of mine who turned me on to that said, hey, you're really good at this. Would you like to coach other people? And your energy is really good. I'm like, why not? Right? I might as well try it out. So then I started helping people take control of their health journey. And through Beachbody, through that business model that they had, they really promoted personal growth. And for me at that time, I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not going to touch this with a 10-foot pole. Like, I hated professional growth. I was I spent seven years in college. I felt like in-services at the time were a waste of time because I barely took anything away, now realizing that was my mindset, but not at that time. And they were, they were fine. They were gentle. They were kind. I'm like, okay, well, it's, just, it's here for you if you want, right? And so then a little prompts here or there. I finally decided to try it after a couple of two years, finally gave it a fair shake. I, I got a book. I didn't want to spend any money. So I rented it from the library, an audio book, because I don't want to read. And so I listened to it on the way to school. It was Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. And so I listened to it, took action on it right away. It was a half hour commute to work. So that day, I, I literally like, I'm going I'm to do this. Let's make, give it a fair shake. So I did. And holy cow, that first day, I'm like, I noticed a difference. Like I noticed a change. It wasn't a huge change, but I noticed a positive impact. And from that day on, I've been, I've been doing personal growth development for myself. And I realized in this journey, oh, I could, I can master my own energy. I don't have to. It's not that I woke up on the right side of the bed today. I chose to have a good day and I could develop the positive neural pathways and dug into the science behind it then and really learned about how to create a positive abundant mindset that lasts how to get rid of the negativity, the weight that's weighing us down, that the things that are stopping our light from shining bright, those walls, the armor, all that stuff. Learn how to dissolve that. Did it in my own life and then started coaching other people from just one-on-one -on -one coaching things to small groups to now where we've built it up into this whole ecosystem where I still do coaching, but it's for our, our high-end clients. But now we have this whole Energizer. That's our community, the Energizer ecosystem where we have a community. We have an online personal growth library, uh, an academy as it were that people can learn and grow from, and then our live and virtual events that we offer to help them all on their journey. But it all started from me realizing, oh, I need this. And then in that journey, there's highs and lows. I hit my rock bottom in that journey, which I didn't touch on, that then I was able to finally really build those foundations, those building blocks from that rock bottom and blossom upward. But to make a really long story short, it's kind of the journey. I took it from me needing that help and support, all started with fitness, that led into personal growth development, into learning your mindset, positivity, helping others in a small scale, to now building it to be the global business that we are. Fantastic. What a great story, Spencer. That's amazing. Well, mate, you know, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a fun journey. And I will say that we've, I've been able to do it full time now for the last four years, but we've been on this journey in some way, shape or form for our, over the last 10 years. Yeah, definitely not exactly an overnight success, but it never really is if you really get into it. Right. Kind of what we see out in the world right now is just the end product, the, the very end of where they've gone. They don't really show or they don't normally show the 10 or so years behind it took to actually get there. You just see the end product. It's kind right. of like uh, the, uh, there's a book, The uh, Atomic Habits. Great book, right? Great. And basically he talks about how you have an ice cube which you, you could look at that ice cube at 25 or 26 degrees, it never melts. 27 degrees, never melts. 
But once it gets to about 32 or 33, it starts to melt just a little bit. And now you're starting to see the progress. Now you're starting to just see the differences mm-hmm. between what you do. So that really it makes a great uh, point there, Spencer. And I got to tell you, Brian Tracy, he was my first book, also my yeah. first book. And I, I got to tell you, I listened to that book for eight hours for the first two or three weeks. I started thinking about it because during the day I work at a hospital, an EVS, which is a fancy way of saying I take trash around all day. But nobody ever bothers me. So all I do is I stick an earbud in my ear and I just listen and continuously educate myself. But he was the first book that I actually got also from the library. I do not read my books. I listen to my books. My wife likes to tell me I absorb my books. It works. However you want to get the knowledge in, it's great. For me, it was listening. I still listen to audiobooks. I finally got into reading probably three, uh, four, five years after I started really getting into it. Then I started reading books. That was a whole journey in of itself. But now, and it's funny, I wrote three books, even though I never liked reading. It was hilarious. And um, Isn't that you know, weird how that works sometimes? So I hate to read books, but I'm going to write one. Right? I don't know what I was thinking, but I did. Oh, well. That's right. Anyway, uh, what was the name of the book? Anyway. I go around with Brian Tracy. Like, there's no. so, so many incredible books by him and, and other people of that caliber. It's just to start somewhere. But then don't just listen to it. Don't just be a personal growth junkie. Uh, take take the advice. You, you probably won't get through as many as quickly. That's okay. Allow it to sink in. Allow those things and take the little tidbits from it and, and let it sink in. And then six months, a year down the road, listen to it again. Like you said, I should listen to it again. Well, great. Listen to it because you're in a different place on your journey than you were before. Some of the stuff might still resonate. Some of it might not. You might hear something you didn't notice the first time that then hits because now you're at that point in your journey when you needed to hear it. You know what book really did that for, we're going to get into books a little bit, I guess. So what book actually really did that exact same for me was The Big Leap. Have you read that one? I haven't read that one. It's on my list. Okay. Okay. That book changed my life forever. Nice. Okay. So, and one of the things you actually kind of touched on a little bit was roadblocks and that kind of thing. But what what he, he calls it is the upper limit problem. And it's this upper limit problem where we get to a point, a certain point in our lives that we can only handle, mentally handle so much love and abundance that we tend to sabotage ourselves to stay in that level. So he goes about how we can raise that upper limit problem, raise the love and abundance that we can actually take in in ourselves so our pro- we prosper a lot better. There's a lot of other things in that book too, but that's the one thing that comes across my mind as we talk about roadblocks and things that we do to ourselves to, to kind of stop ourselves from uh, growing. Right. It's amazing how we self-sabotage sometimes intentionally. Most of the time it's unintentional. And then once we uncover it, work through it, we're good for a while. And then, oh, we, we've hit that next top level, right? We filled up that container, whatever. Now it's time to expand again. But that that expansion takes work. It takes effort. It usually takes deconstructing or removing something to then be able to continue to grow. And so it's it's always a little push and pull aspect, but it's all for the greater good and expansion of your light. And so... Uh, do the work, but it's, it takes work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm a little curious about your mindset that, that kind of sets you off between the fishing and the kayak and not being able to lift that kayak to, okay, this is what I'm going to start doing now. I mean, what was the actual switch? Can you explain that a little bit more? Well, man, the switch for me was, I mean, so I, I really fell into the, that hobby and loved it and so much so where I started chasing it all over the country, right? So I live in Wisconsin and in the united states so then i was traveling all over the united states kayak fishing and doing tournaments and for me it was just i saw people who were putting their kayaks on trailers because uh, kayak fishing or the uh, fishing kayaks itself were starting heavier and heavier as they started to do more things to them as opposed to just like a recreational kayak and okay so i had a, I had a fishing kayak it was a little heavier but i still should be able to get up there and I saw people get all these trailers and all these gadgets and gadgets and all that stuff to make it happen. And I'm like, I just want to lift it on top of my car. Let's keep it easy. Let's go keep basic. And I just was getting frustrated at the fact that I couldn't. And it was to the point where I was finally sick and tired of feeling sick and tired of, of being overweight. So the big transition point for me of being like, nope, this needs to happen. It wasn't, it was partly at the end of the fishing season and fallish time early fall because then i had to go back to teaching so my fishing time definitely got reduced but we got out for christmas break it was like december 22nd 23rd i think it was one of those days and here in wisconsin the snow was falling 
but I had piano students at the time that, that I taught that lived on a river. Well, the river never froze over because it was moving water and it was right around 32, 33 degrees. And so they said, hey, yeah, you can launch here and go fishing if you want. That's fine. I'm like, sweet. I'm like, I have a half day from school. This is awesome. I got off for winter break. Now I took my kayak there, launched my kayak. Well, to get down to the water was this big hill. And so going down there, no problem, right? So I'm out there fishing, didn't catch anything, but it was still fun being out with big snowflakes coming down. It was gorgeous. Well, now it's time to come back. So I get my kayak out of the water and I'm looking at this hill going, oh God, like I have to get this thing up in this hill. Like, all right, let's do this thing, right? I'm feeling sick and tired of the way I look and felt, right? I'm a little more sluggish, not as strong as I used to be. And not that I really worked out a ton beforehand, but okay, let's just, let's do this. So I put it, the strap around the front of it, strap around my waist, started walking up, right? And dragging the kayak up. And I get two or three steps and I slide back down. And I get two oh. or three and I slide back down. I'm like, okay, well, maybe this, maybe this isn't the way to do it. So then, then I push the kayak. I'm like, okay, cool. I got like five or six steps. And then I slide two or three steps down. And this happened over and over and over again. I get like halfway up. And there's one point I got halfway. And then I slid like almost to the bottom of where I started. And I'm just like, I'm so exhausted, frustrated, pissed off, cursing and swearing everything. And then my piano students weren't there at the time. But Kurt was swearing everything under the sun and just like feeling j- exhausted, depleted, frustrated, irritated at life and the fact that I couldn't do this. I felt like I wasn't a man, quote unquote, because I couldn't get this thing up the hill. Now, thankfully, my piano students showed up after from wherever they were going after shopping from school or the kids had off that day. So they came back and then the kids were able to help me out. I, I, two students and I were able to then get the kayak up, up the car. Fine. I just felt so masculated just out of it that I knew something had to change. And that was this, December 23rd. I was already planning on starting working out more or less, but this was like, no, this needs to happen. This is the last, last straw. And so for me, that switch happened when I finally felt like I wasn't who I thought I was or could be and, and had to make that shift uh, to then work out, go move your body, do something good for you. And then that started this whole journey where I now 10 plus years later, I still work out five to six days a week and eat healthy for the most part, 85% of the time. And then burgers and ice cream and pizza and all that other stuff too, but uh, enjoy life. So, and then that allows me to chase my passions, to go kayak fishing now all around all around the world and country if I want, but I can go hiking and just enjoy life, whatever that is. It doesn't have to be extreme. It just allows me to be able to do what I want to do for as long as possible. Fantastic story. Thank you for for going through all that. I'm having to relive that all over again. <laughs> but it, it's you know, part of the story, right? And so I just, I'm happy I could share. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the elaborate long stories. It's just, oh. No, that's why we're here. That's why this is a podcast, because we could tell stories. So... <laughs> What's funny is that really has a lot of congruency to entrepreneurship in general, where you could take two or three steps and then slide down a little bit then take four or five steps, and then slide down a little bit and get frustrated with yourself. But as long as you keep pushing, keep pushing forward, eventually, somehow, some way, you're actually going to get up there. And sometimes it does take the help from other people to get that kayak all the way up to the top of the hill, right? 100%. 100%. I saw that in my journey for sure. So initially it started fitness, right? Fitness of helping other people get fit and healthy. And then my friends, family, but then I was trying to find my niche. What would that be? Well, it makes sense to do kayak fishing. Let's do outdoor kind of fitness type stuff and target people who are kayak fishing, who you think kayak fishermen would be in good shape, but most of them are not, right? They, they are looking for a way to go fishing inexpensively at first. And then as the hobby takes you, you add more and more money to it. But I, I thought, well, let's do this. So then I started, I met some people and friends who were entrepreneurs themselves. And so they recommend, hey, listen to this podcast, check out this blog, this book. So I started digesting all of it, listening to all the podcasts, reading, reading the books and, and, and blogs and all this stuff to like, hey, well, here's how to, here's a freemium for your email list. And here's how to grow this. So here's an idea. And here's this part. The thing that I missed when I was first starting out and then transitioning it to the mindset component outside of the fitness, right? To do the, the more positivity, abundant mindset, more energy, say energy work, but learning how to master your energy sovereignty, that, that flow of energy was 
that I had all these pieces of, oh, here's how to do this. Oh, here's how you can scale this. Here's how you can do this. But they were pieces of the puzzle, but they were all over the place. They didn't line up. It wasn't like, start here, then do this, then do this, then do this. And even the books that I read that were describing it, I couldn't figure it out from like how to put it into my business. Because that's something that I've struggled with and still do to a degree is, I just need to kind of explain to my language at points or point it out in this way. And then all of a sudden, none of the fireworks go off. And, oh, da, 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 this all makes sense. But I need it first laid out. And I didn't necessarily know that I knew that was me, but also I didn't relate it to the business at that point until I took the plunge and hired a coach. So for me, it took me hiring a person and we, we swapped what am I looking for? services. We swapped services, right? So he helped me of building my business. I helped him with his health and fitness and mindset and more health and fitness and mindset because he was really rocking with that. So we, we swapped services. So that was a nice way to, to get in and do this without needing to spend a lot of money since we weren't making the money that I was hoping we, were, we could make to afford to do all this. But I took the leap of a coach and then said, all right, I'm, what do I need to do? And he's like, all right, what do you have so far? So laid out all the stuff and he could see it was like all over the place. And he said, Let's start here. All right, we already had a starting block with something. So he's great. But now let's add the next piece. Okay, now it's the next piece. So we started with a, a five-day challenge, a positivity challenge, which we still do to this day about every other month or so. So I'll start with the five-day challenge. And he's, okay, well, what's next? Where do they go from there? I'm like, oh, I never thought of that. I just thought, I serve them with this free challenge, but then what's next? Oh, well, what should, what should that look like? And we describe, we talk about it. And then also, oh, well, this is what I could put together. Well, what, well then where do they go from here? Where do they go from here, right? So we're building like the value steps, the customer journey. Stuff I didn't know anything about or I might have read, but it never clicked or resonated with me to put together. And also now I have a person holding my hand and going, oh, yep, now here, now here, now here. But how how can you make it Spencer's? How can you make it to us and the Energizers, the family that we're building? How does that work and and grow? And so once I did that, then we really scaffolded so much so that in October, so I started working with him in late August. So in October, we made as much as we made from January through September in October alone. And then we kept growing in November, December. So, I mean, that was incredible. The next year, we tripled what we did in income from there. The next year, the third year, we stayed the same roughly revenue-wise. And then last year, that fourth year, however that works with that, is we doubled or almost, almost doubled what we did the last year. So, I mean, it's growth, right? So, okay, we, we did really well. And then we we grew a little more than we stayed, stayed a little bit, we grew a little bit, but then we doubled it. And now this year we're looking at continuing that growth. But it's all because I invested in myself, even though I was trading services at the time, but invested in myself and became monetary of these coaches and people to help and guide me through this journey. Fantastic. And looking into somebody else to maybe kind of fit those puzzle pieces together that you kind of not, are like, okay, they're over here, but they're just not quite fitting together to get somebody to... I don't know if you, you know, take the hammer and hammer those pieces together, whatever it takes to get those pieces to fit together. Or to show you, use this piece here. I like put the nail here and then hammer it. Like you do the work and, and do it, but here will help you, will support you or tell you, nope, this is the piece here. Put this shingle here or whatever that is that for what you're building. The, the one stipulation I will say to this is there are so many business coaches and stuff out there. There are a lot of people who don't know what the heck they're talking about. They'll swindle you. They'll, they'll, they'll talk really nice and they'll share what they've just read out of a book, but they've never put it into work or experience themselves. Their, their business is failing or struggling. Make sure you do your due diligence with that person. For mine, I checked out what he had. Right? He had multiple businesses, virtual and in person, some that were successful, some that failed. And, and he learned and grew. So now the last couples were successful and he's learning and growing. He openly admits all of those things. So from for as you're looking into coaches, whether that's a business coach, a personal development coach, energy, whatever, whoever you're looking at, do your due diligence with them because there's so many people who are out there just to steal your money for a quick buck that it's, I've seen so many people ripped off. I've been ripped off. Don't just do your due diligence. You still might get ripped off, but hopefully not. And I'll tell you, that's why we value our community so much is because we vet the experts we relate people to like, oh, you're struggling with this here. Go talk to this person to talk with this person because we vetted them. We know that they know their stuff and they're, they're there for you. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Okay. Keep an idea of what you're doing, who you're talking to. Make sure if you can avoid that, that scam type of artist thing if possible, because it's going to cost you in the end. 
I think one thing that you mentioned, which kind of strikes me a little bit, is the value of exchange. And sometimes when we're doing things like this, it doesn't necessarily have to cost us actual dollars. Right. Sometimes you can exchange. For example, I'll give you an example. I have in my YouTubes and some of my shorts, a graphic that I use of my, this is my logo behind me, by the way, of my logo. But instead of paying for it, I gave him six months worth of advertising on my podcast. So I got these fantastic graphics that I use for just about everything, basically for free. So it's just that, that exchange. sometimes you could exchange something that, that they need for something that you need instead of money. And it actually works out better that way. The, the barter system is a real thing. And I have used the barter system before, as I described, and still do to this day, because why not? If you and your services or the talents and things you have can help someone else, why wouldn't you want to help them genuinely? And, and then if they're able to exchange for something that you need and can do, great. So like the, like the coaching thing, all right? So I bartered, gave him my services to help him. He lost 20 pounds and felt better, looked better and all that good stuff so he could do the stuff he wants to do more. And then he helped me with the, the business coaching. Then it transitioned to us paying him. But, but before that, it was, it was barter or people coming to speak at our events, right? There's certain things we'll, we'll barter about, okay, you come speak and then you do this for us, we'll do this for you. Why? There's nothing wrong with it, right? And I love the point of it doesn't always have to cost money. Sometimes that's the best exchange to do and you don't have to worry about it. But there's lots of ways to barter as well and, and see what services, because remember what you have to offer, even if you're starting out, what you have to offer is valuable, right? Believe in yourself and own up to that and then be willing to share that as you're trying to sell your stuff or build up your business and have the impact you want to have. Know that your stuff has value too. Don't downplay it too much. Um, and then offer that with other people. And you know what? It was a risk. I'm talking to a guy who had 10 plus years of successful businesses and failed businesses and all this stuff. And I threw it out there thinking, it's, he's just going to say no to me. Like he's like, yeah, no, I'm, you get, you need to pay me. I'm not going to barter services. Right. But he said, yes, yeah, right. he took, he took that risk with me. And who says other person might not quote unquote take that risk with you, or it's something that they are looking for that maybe you realize or not. So the worst thing you'll get to know, okay. So if that happens, great. Then you could always pay them or figure out something else. That's okay too. Yeah, don't be afraid of no. I mean, you never really know until you ask. And it's it's one of the fears that I actually talk about is the fear of no and and that fear of rejection of not they say no, oh no, I must not be a good person or something. No. But you never know until you ask, right? Nobody's gonna know what you need. I tell my son this all the time. You nobody's gonna know what you need until you actually say something to somebody. So always keep that in mind. Don't be afraid of the no. They might say yes. Right. You never know. And, and when you get that yes, then it's incredible. It's the first time I did a, a like a real true sales call. Right. Like I, I had the offer stack set and what we're sharing people. I'm like, oh, my God, are they going to say no? Are they going to say no? Well, you don't know until you ask. And so if they say no, OK, you got to go through those no's to get through yeses. Just know you're going to get no's. Be OK with it. No, it's not personal. It's just what you're sharing or offering isn't for them at that time in their life or in that moment. Well, maybe later on, maybe not. but keep going and don't let those stop you. I mean, I've had no's bring me down and be like, ah, oh, Spencer, I could do better or you can do this. Uh, oh, okay. But then I pick myself up and I keep going. And I always try to lean, especially before sales calls, I try to lean in and go, nope, what's the good? Let's, what does the yes feel like? What does that look like? Well, how can we do this and build that positive energy into it? So when we go into the call, it's just positive energy the whole time, whether that's in person on a call or whatever else. Exactly. And you always have to remember that yes lives in the world of no, mm -hmm. right? And so you don't get to yes until you get through the slogs of no, until you get to that yes, right? So we got to keep that in mind when we're doing our sales calls or, or when we're talking to people. Don't be afraid to get that no. Sometimes you want that no because that means that you're getting closer to yes. Right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Oh, and one more thing I want to say, because my wife always talks about this too. There's times where you'll hear the same thing over and over again from different types of people, even from your wife, but somebody will say it exactly the same way she did. And you'll go, oh, yeah. I <laughs> right. You've heard it. All the time. I told you that before. And I was like, yeah, I know. But for some reason, it clicked this time. I love you, honey, but it just didn't click. I'm sorry. Yeah. But it's <laughs> like, right. And then, then they'll get mad at you or whatever, potentially. And you're like, OK, but at least it clicked down and just keep going for it. I've. But that's happened with me and my wife multiple times. And now I, I'm finally starting to pay attention more and let it hit when she says it. <laughs> it works out better. Yeah. Years. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
So in your first year of business, when you were just getting started, is there a pitfall that you, that you encounter that kind of sticks in your mind? Oh man. I mean, there's a lot of pitfalls, right? A lot of, a lot of those things that I, that I got stuck in or fell into and struggled to get out of. The biggest one really was one I already kind of already talked about was not knowing what the succession was, mm-hmm. but like what's the progression of the client? Okay. I have this offer. I have this thing, right? So they have the five day positivity challenge, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Then where do they go? Like, where do they go from there? What's the next product that I'm selling or thing that can help them on their journey? And so that's was the biggest pitfall that coach helped me understand. Okay, now here, start here, then go here, then go here, then go here, right? Building that product line for us, but also then uh, the client journey. So we understand. The other big pitfall was, you know, it's not about you. It's about your client. What are they saying? What are they feeling? What are their pains, their problems, their their struggles? What are they going through? That then you're using that language to to connect with them. And for the longest time, I, I'm like, oh my god, I feel salesy doing this, like saying it like this, because that's not exactly how I would say it. In all actuality, looking back, most of it was how I would say it. I guess it didn't feel like that at the time. I'm like, because I'm intentionally trying to. I'm using their language. I'm using the way they comment or that they think because, well, I want to make sure that I relate to them. And it felt slimy and fell off, but really I know what I could do. It can help them and serve them that now I'm just making sure that it clicks with them. Like when your friend says that thing to you instead of your wife and it also light bulb goes on, that's all you're doing for your client or your customer is you're saying it in the way that that light bulb moment goes on for them. And they go, oh yeah, let me, let me go with them. Right. Let me go with DJ Scoop. Let me go with with the Spencer Jones, the Energizers. Let's go with you or whatever, right? Let's do that because it clicked with, yeah. because you're using the language that resonates with them. Exactly. It's funny how that goes right back into what we we're talking about earlier, is as the language and the clicking and all that kind of thing too. Is using the there's nothing wrong with using the language of the people that you're trying to help. That's actually probably better than trying to use your own language because. I mean, if, if you're speaking, if I'm speaking English and then this other person's speaking French, he's not going to understand what I'm saying. If I'm talking about email courses and things like that, but you're talking about car sales, there's, there's not going to be any kind of camaraderie there. There's not going to be any clicking. So, I mean, if you go, I mean, for example, if you do coaching, like we do, you want to go into people that need to be coached, listen to their stories, listen to what they need, and then use that same language again so they understand what you're talking about. They understand, oh, yeah, I, I know what he's talking about. Yeah, I need that. So don't be afraid to go, get into the language of the people that you're trying to help. And ask them, like, just ask them, hey, what are you struggling with right now? Or, hey, what do you even do on a Friday night? Or when you're struggling, what are some things you feel? Just throw out those questions on social media or in your friends group or who your ideal clients would be. And see what people say and then pull those things in. I've done it. And then like in a day or two, I make a post using one or two of those words, right? That they're struggling with. And it's hilarious to me because I see from my side of it, they don't necessarily brought that connection that they commented and said those words on a post. And then I just made a post about it. And they're like, you're reading my mind. Get out of my head. Not in a bad way, but you're like, you're exactly, you know what I'm thinking or that's exactly how I feel. And I get so so many, I get a number of those comments in my posts and in my emails and different things because I'm in their mind, in the language that they're using and putting it in there. And that just means, oh, good, it's hitting home, it's resonating, it's clicking. So now we're building up that, that trust within us. And so well, if the customer knows that the question, they're more likely to think that you have the answer to it, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Back when you were starting, did you have any mentors or did you have anybody that you followed or anything like that to keep you pushing forward? I mean, we talked about the mentor that you had earlier. Is there anybody else besides that? Yeah. So, I mean, the mentor and my coach was Michael Faber from Unleash You Now. You check him out if you like. He's, he's great. The Unleash You Now family is awesome still. I still work with him. The early, early mentors before I hired the coach, that would be Pat Flynn. And right, I'm a big Pat Flynn fan and just loved it the podcasts and the books and different things, got his stuff, learned and grew from him until I feel like I, I mean, I'm not above him by any means, but I'm beyond where he's teaching. 
So then I had to move on, right? And that's okay, right? We outgrow those those teachers for that time and then we move on. Although I'm sure I still can go back and learn from him. But Pat Flynn was a big one. Chris Ducker was another buddy. Friend, right? Yeah, his buddy, right? So I felt I met Pat Flynn. Then I started listening to Chris Ducker, I think probably because of Pat Flynn. And really followed those two and listened and read their stuff and and kind of worked with them just a little bit through the stuff that they were doing, little groups or challenges that they offered. And those were my main two outside of different books and things that I that I purchased and read. Yeah, because of Pat Flynn, I also started following Amy Porterfield. Yep, same here. Really same good, here. really good. And then Entrepreneurs on Fire. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I've, I've listened to that many, many times. And, and just other recommendations. Pat Flynn, especially when you're starting out, like he offers so many great tips and strategies to do it. But again, that pitfall that I ran into, I was listening to Pat Flynn. I was listening to Chris Ducker, Amy Porterfield, and, the, and these other ones. Then I got all these great pieces, but I didn't necessarily have that systematic approach, which I get it. It's a free podcast, right? If you want to, if you want to get more of an approach, you, you pay money or you barter or whatever to make that happen. So I get it. I'm not blaming him, but I felt, oh, this is it. Oh, this is it. Oh, here's the golden egg. Oh, here's this. Oh, here's this. And it's no, they're, they're great things to have, but nothing's going to flip the switch and make it an overnight success. Now, we've been 10 years in this thing. And I feel like we haven't had an overnight success and we're, we're a lot more successful than we were. I'm also feeling like we're just on the cusp. We're on the cusp of something incredible. Of, uh, we, we have a beautiful foundation created and, and now we're testing it out and it's all good. Now let's get more people in and, and really test this out. I'm like, it's just on the cusp. And I, I asked Michael, my coach, just this last week, is there ever a tipping point, like a true tipping point, like where we wake up one day and all of a sudden there's a hundred new signups or a hundred new things. And he's very rarely, very rarely is there a day like that. And I'm like, oh, that's like my heart shattered because I'm like <laughs> opening and banging on this day, right? We've built so much work. But he says, but what will happen is you start to see one or two, a little more signups this day, and then a little bit more here and a little bit more here. And then it just, it starts to build slowly, but surely but instead of one day of a hundred signups, it's nope, you got two today, then nothing for a day or two, then you got two or three the next day. And this is a little bit more and more and more and more. And it builds up. I'm like, oh, okay. And what's cool, since he said that, it then raised my awareness to, oh, I have seen that happen. I have seen more people sign up for these different things or join our, our free Facebook group or or get our free memberships or even the paid stuff. Oh, okay, no, I have seen that. Okay, so it is happening. It's just not that overnight success of uh, 100 signups or 1,000 signups. Now, maybe when you launch or do something potentially, but usually there's years and years and years of all that stuff, figuring out the, the words you use, the sales pitch, da, 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 that make that a possibility. So it's all, all part of it. This year now we're putting together a big summit for our, for our energizers. So, oh yeah, okay, there's going to be an upsell at the summit, of course, right? So that we can continue to serve them. And then I'm expecting that to be, and hoping for that to be really good based on how we're structuring it. But all that work that led up to that and getting people to that event, right? That, yeah, it wasn't an overnight success by any means, even if it was like, here, one day we're here, one day we're here on paper of how many people are signed up, but all that stuff beforehand led to that moment. Exactly. I actually have a thing about that that I always say. Those little things that we do, they're like snowflakes, right? And when we get a bunch of those snowflakes together, we, get them, we turn them into a snowball. And we, if we get enough of those snowballs together, we either start throwing them at each other or we make a snowman, right? And so when we finally get to that last piece, that's our snowman or, or snowball fight or whatever it ends up being. It's just the little pieces that get together that finally make that one final product that, that, you know, that you make. Yeah. It's truly incredible. And it's all added up from all those little things, all those going back to habits, right? The of James Clear Atomic Habits, those habits that you do a little bit every day, right? I didn't lose uh, the 40 pounds I lost from one workout I did. No, it's a daily working out five, six days a week. And okay, watch what I'm eating. It's the business I'm putting in the reps of connecting with other people, inviting people and, and doing the daily habits I need to do for the business to keep it growing so we can continue to impact people. But it's always built up on those little things that add up over time. Fantastic. I love it. Love it. In your vast amount of accomplishments that you've had up until the 10, 14 years that you've been in business, is there one that you're really particularly proud of? Ooh. That's a very nice question. Thank you. I've really struggled the last, well, for 30 years, I struggled with my ego. Um, just I let my ego run my life. That's what ended up bringing me to my rock bottom moment. 
So I try not to let pride or stuff get in the way of, of that. But to answer your question, I'm very, I guess, proud as a moment without the pride ego part of this. That is, let's see, the trying to do math, it hurts. Nine months ago, let's say. So summer last last year, I was sitting by my campfire in the backyard, a little fire pit in the backyard. And I'm sitting there and I'm just thinking about life and business and where we wanted to go. And I'm dreaming about this summit idea, right? Like I've been thinking about it now for the last 10 years. I'm like, I'd love to put on a summit. This would be cool, but I don't know. And now I've been, it's been toying around my mind more seriously, like the last year or two. And then I'm sitting up by the fire and I'm like, okay, I talked, I, I put out little calls for people or places and things. I've you know, started doing a little bit of research. And then it was, I kind of got the numbers and some of those things. I'm like, okay, this is going to be, like, you have to be in, it'd be all in for something like this. So I remember sitting by that fire and then going, you know what? I remember this, this, this excitement, this, this energy of going, let's do this. Let's go all in and embrace it. And it scared me to a degree because of the ego I had before, because then if I say yes to this, is my ego just going to go wrong? Because you have to be, to put out something like this, you have to be big and bold and confident with yourself, right? I would be afraid that I wouldn't be able to tame that beast that it was. And it was a crazy, loud ego man beast before. But now, I would, no, I can do this. And I've set in the, the bumpers in place. So like my wife, my friends, the mastermind group that I'm in, who helped check me to make sure the ego doesn't get out. But I was like, okay, I'm in. And I, I had a call with Michael that night. We were just chatting. I was sitting by the fire. He was, I think he was at, the, at an event at the end of the night, just sitting by his hotel room. And we were just chatting. And so let's do this. Are, are you in? And I'm like, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. I, I feel this fire. I'm stepping into it. So the accomplishment that I'm proud of is stepping into my light and saying, nope, this is where I'm going to be. That's where I feel like I need to be. And I'm standing outside of it. And that night I took that step in. I stepped into that light and just owned it. And I knew I had stuff in place. Okay, I got to keep an eye out. Don't worry for this. But I have the checks and balances in place to help me. But I'm fully, fully owning it. And oh my God, it was so energizing, so freeing, so exhilarating, scary at the same time. But that just means that we're doing the right stuff and headed in the right direction. It means we get to impact more people and help more people. And it just made all the difference when I was able to fully embrace that light, step into it, and then shine. And it's been incredible ever since. Stressful. I mean, it, it's raised everything, right? Doing that, like all of a sudden the roller coaster of emotions, as much as I'm good at managing it, to a degree, it's been a much more drastic roller coaster with some higher highs and lows and uh, all that good stuff. But wow, is it worth it? And it's so much more. I mean, it was fulfilling before, but now that much more fulfilling. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing how we go through those different types of things. First of all, ego has had its job for a really long time. So it's going to fight you because it wants to keep its job. And so, right. But once we get to actually push that ego aside, and start accomplishing the things that we really wanted to accomplish without having to work to feed the ego, it really turns out to be so much better. Right. And a lot of times, one of the biggest things I talk about in my podcast is fear and what that actually means. And when you actually fear something and you get excited about it all at the same time, it's definitely something that is saying, hey, you need to go this way. This is mm -hmm. the right direction because you fear it, which means it's good. You need to go towards that fear. It's not like a saber toothed tiger that's going to eat us. Right. It's not that kind of fear. It's the fear of, well, I don't know what it's going to be, but you know what? It's exciting. So let's do it. Do you, do you remember the acronym for fear by chance? I've, I've heard so many. I, I'm trying to drag a blank as I'm thinking. That's about. okay. It's a, a false evidence appearing real. That's right. That's yes. right. <laughs> right. And so many times we let fear hold us back. But if we, if we do look at a calculator risk and it's not a saber toothed tiger, a ledge or a bus screaming at us or anything that's going to harm, truly harm our life. Step into it, own it, and, and embrace it. Who cares if you quote unquote fail from it? You don't reach that goal or thing you wanted to. You, you learn from it, take it as a learning experience. And then you just got stronger and wiser for the next time that, that something comes up, right? And you might have less obstacles then because you already know how to overcome it from that experience. But yeah, embrace, embrace fear and own it and just be happy you're alive and get to have that experience. Exactly. And we don't want to know what's going to happen if we don't do that. I mean, then it turns into regret. What would have happened 
if I, if I did do this and, but I didn't. So now what would have happened? What could have been? So that's why it's so much better to embrace fear and move into fear because now we know and we either learn from it or we succeed from it. Exactly. Exactly. And it's especially well, any point of your entrepreneurial journey, step into it and own it. I think probably every uh, guest you've had on here who's gotten into fear at some point has said this, hopefully said the same thing. No, just go for it because it's part of this journey. Exactly. But see, now we're hearing it in your voice. So maybe I might click with somebody. Hey, you never know. That's right. All right. So let's say, for example, if you came across somebody, and I'm sure this happens a lot, came across somebody that's just getting started in their entrepreneur venture, like my school believers out here, yeah. what one or two pieces of advice would you actually give them? So first one, believe in yourself. Believe in you. because. If you don't, no one else is going to, or that's not true. Some people will, but you're not going to be nearly as strong or as you're not going to shine as bright and impact the lives that you want to impact, have the business you want to have, unless you truly believe in you, right? That whole imposter syndrome. Everybody feels who's going for something bigger feels imposter syndrome. Step into your light, own it, and know that you have that knowledge, the wisdom, the strength to do it. You might have to learn some things along the way. We all do, but you are worthy of it. You are enough to to make that happen. So believe in you. The second thing I would say is as you're just starting out on this journey, do the research, right? Do the research in what you're doing, what you're sharing, what you're building and creating and figure out the not not sexy part of it. What's the language that people use? What are the the value steps? What are those things so now I can have a a solid foundation and then get going, but don't be afraid to get going as you're building that foundation. Uh, Because you won't know until you start testing out even a little bit and bringing people in of testing this out. And then you're like, ah, this didn't work. I got to change it or adjust it or strengthen it or whatever it is, or just throw it out and try something new. And great. But you won't know until you start testing it out. That's two, I guess. I'm going to add a third one because I'm sassy. Oh, and then (laughs) it goes in with the first one. This is something that I say all the time, whether it's on my podcast or stages or wherever, that I just hope that everybody here knows. No matter what happens, good or bad, you are amazing. You are worthy. You are enough just the way you are, right? You don't have to do anything, change anything, or prove anything to anyone, not even yourself, because you are truly amazing, worthy, and enough. So embrace that. Let that energy flow through you and, and course through you and do show in everything that you do, because you truly are amazing, worthy, and enough, even if you don't feel like it at that time, you are. Oh, great words. Great words. Thank you, Spencer. I'm sure that's going to touch somebody out there. All right. So what I like to do with all my guests is get a six month goal. So where do you see yourself and your company in the next six months, Spencer? That was a fabulous question. So it depends when this is released, I guess. Would be the <laughs> goal. So Well, from the recording of this, in two days from recording this, we will be starting our summit. So in six months from now, we are starting our first ever Energizer Summit. And so six month goal from now is we have a sold out summit. All 150 spots are sold out and we have Energizers who are coming together, uh, feeling alive, feeling energized. For me, my goal is I feel I feel excited. Uh, not fearful, not fearful of like stuff going wrong, but just, oh my God, this is all happening and all, uh, but excited, anxious, nervous, and um, uh, and a goal that we are are uh, serving, I don't know, let's say a third of that, we'll say a third of that room in our, our upsell to our elite coaching program. Perfect. Okay, Spencer, so what I'm going to do with you, if you don't mind, is I'd like to actually follow up with you in six months. I love it. Please there do. You go. <laughs> and see if we've accomplished those goals and hold, hold you a little bit of accountable. Is that okay? I would greatly appreciate that. It would be amazing. Yes. Awesome. All right, we're going to do that. All right, Spencer, this is your time to shine. This is the time where I'd like you to kind of advertise yourself, tell us about what you do and how we get a hold of you. Okay, ready, set, go. Well, I'm Spencer Jones, the Prince of Positivity, and I'm here to help you get energized. If you feel 
like uh, you're struggling, exhausted, frustrated, overwhelmed, and you'd rather feel energized, excited, get that breath of fresh air, less stress and ready to go after life, then we're here to serve you. We have a community. We have an online personal growth academy that teaches you all the tools and strategies to overcome those roadblocks and live events and virtual events to help you, give you those tools and strategies, but get around amazing people at the same time. So if that resonates with you and you're just ready to step into your light and shine, come check us out. All you have to do, go, all you have to do is go to wearejonesin4.com. So we are, and then J-O-N-E-S-I-N-F-O-R.com, like your Jones and Force and Positivity. So feel free to check that out. We're on all the social media platforms at Jones and Four. Feel free to message me, any of that good stuff. But you can get all the information on our website, wearejonesin4.com. And just remember this. You've heard me say it before. You can hear it again. You are amazing, worthy, and enough just the way you are. Thanks. All right, Spencer. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Any of that stuff will definitely be in the show notes. So if you just want to click on it, it'll be there for you. Spencer, thank you so much for being an undiscovered entrepreneur. This was an absolute blast. I just love talking to you. We can do this for two or three more hours. I totally agree. I had an absolute blast. Time flew by. I'm like, how, how did it, how is it this time already? I don't right? know. Right? <laughs> So perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and everything you are doing. Thank you. All right. All right, Scoop Believers, make sure you stay tuned for the wrap up. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Spencer. Man, Spencer is great. He had so much great information. We have a lot in common, a little more than I thought we were. We both love Pat Flynn. That's probably one of the biggest things I could talk about. I love it. Such a positive guy. I really loved his positivity and his story about the kayak. So many references on how entrepreneurship actually works. Being sliding up and sliding down, sliding and then actually getting some help to get all the way back up the hill. And how that ended up being a tipping point for him and his entrepreneur adventure. So always keep that in mind as you go along in your entrepreneur adventure. Don't be afraid to get help from other people. You are going to slide. It's going to happen. I mean, be prepared for it because it's going to happen. But eventually, if you keep going, keep pushing, get help from others, you're going to get to the top of that hill. Anyway, thank you, Spencer, so much for being on The Undiscovered Entrepreneur. I really appreciate you. All right, so a little bit more about what's going on with me and what's happening in my life right now. Uh, a couple of things. First thing I want to talk about real quick is I did my second half of my Entrepreneur Olympics on YouTube. Look in the show notes for a link to actually watch that speech. And I'll put, I'll go ahead and link up the first one too so you can watch both of them at the same time if you'd like. I really enjoyed doing that. I'm going to be doing more in those because I need the practice on being able to speak. So you're going to actually join me in this little adventure of speaking, I guess you could say. The other thing too is I am now, looks like I'm joining a panel of speakers that's going to be happening here real soon. It's going to be a summit kind of thing. It's going to be a, with a group called the Beacon of Light and Leadership Facebook group. We're going to be doing summits together with my buddy RJ. You might have heard me coach him a little bit. This is something I guess he's doing return to help me. So keep an eye out or an ear out, depending on what's going on here. <laughs> on dates, that's going to be happening. I will definitely keep you informed of that. And finally, uh, summertime is approaching. We're actually in spring right now. Things are starting to pick back up at the restaurant. So hopefully we'll actually start seeing some new progress happening there and here on the podcast too. At this point, I just want to say thank you very much and make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, whatever you got to do to see the next episode coming out, which will be part two of three of Experience Entrepreneurs. Until then, thank you, everybody, and have a good evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>
and a podcast and a coach, every minute counts in my day to day. It's hard to be consistent in any of my social medias, and at this point, I just can't hire a social media manager. It's just too gosh darn expensive. Pinnacle AI to the rescue! I've been using Pinnacle AI for a couple of weeks now and seen big improvements in my reach and consistency. Do you want to have time and increase your productivity too? Go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI for more information. Save yourself time and grow your brand. Try it now and see what it can do for you.